The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Olukaide Ariwala, says the public opinion, no matter how strong or weighty, cannot override or supersede the constitution of the country. Justice Ariwala said this at the Supreme Court uh, while inaugurating 23 judges of the Federal High Court. Uh, Rice correspondent Godfrey Eshemuge has more. There's so much work in the Nigerian justice system as the courts have more than their fair share of cases to handle each year. Due to the sheer workload, there's therefore a need to engage more judges to get the job done in order to read the courts of mounting case files of pending lawsuits and other matters. 23 new judges of the Federal High Court are now joining the system which will do a whole world of good in a country known for delays in handling cases. Though that's a bit of progress made, it's still a far cry from the required number of judges needed to do a thorough job. For the new Federal High Court judges, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Olukaide Ariwola, says there is no room for questionable conduct. The satellite of the National Judicial Council beams brightly on all judicial officers across the country. The National Judicial Council should never, either by omission or commission, be mistaken for a toothless bulldog. It can back fiercely and as well bite deeply and aggressively too. Our radar is sophisticated enough to detect every form of corruption and wrongdoing by judicial officers. And we will not waste a moment in taking the necessary action to fish out bad eggs. And to Nigerians, Justice Ariwala says public opinion can't take the place of the law. Several petroleum attacks are regularly opened and heaped on the judiciary. It is, however, crystal clear that public opinion, no matter how serious or weighty it might be, cannot override or supersede the constitution of the country, which we aptly apply in deciding each case before the court. Nevertheless, your lordship still owe your conscience and the generality of the Nigerian masses, particularly those who are looking up to you, the great responsibility of good moral rectitude and acceptable conduct to uphold and consolidate the trust reposed in you. Uluka Ariwola Jr. from Oyo State, who is son of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, is one of the 23 new High Court judges drawn from 20 states, including the Federal Capital Territory. Godfrey Eshamoge, Arise News. All right, uh, joining us for more on this is Chidi Odinkalu, who is uh, currently uh, the chair of the governing board of the Global Rights and uh, the International Refugee Rights Initiative. So good to see you uh, on Newsnight tonight. Uh, well, um, let's start with the point that was made in that report uh, that one of the 23 uh, High Court judges that was sworn in happens to be uh, the son of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Uh, Ariwola Jr. What do you make of the optics? Is there anything fundamentally wrong with that? It's messed up. Thank you for having me. I mean, I'm not going to disappoint you and tell you that it is fantastic. <laughs> that is not true. I think the idea that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and uh, you know, first of all, I've got to wish all the new judges well. By the way, judging is a very difficult thing. It's a huge responsibility to sit in judgment over others. You know, for those who are Christian or live by the Christian holy book, it says, judge not so that you shall not be judged. Uh, and so judging is a very heavy responsibility. And I'm not going to sit down here and tell you that I, I, I don't have a sense of, um, of consideration for the responsibilities these people are taking. I think I'm older than everyone who's been uh, sworn in here. And I, so anyone who's older than me, falls into a bracket, uh, younger than me falls into a bracket. But that said, the idea that the Chief Justice sits down at the NJC um, to be approving appointments for his son and uh, his, the children of his mates and all of that is messed up. And we have to be honest in saying that. You know, he's saying the NJC barks and bites and bites aggressively. Will the Chief Justice bite his son aggressively? That's the problem. 
when they are filling the judiciary with their family members, will they be going to bite their family members aggressively? These are other people's children that they'll be biting aggressively. There is something fundamentally wrong with that. That's the problem here. So in this case, uh, you know, you've been on the issues of rights for the people and as well. This is coming back to the judiciary, the NJC. And uh, perhaps we should start talking about um, how we got here, because uh, as Nigerians and every lover of uh, uh, jurisprudence will say, justice must be seen and felt. What do you think should be done to remedy uh, a bad situation that's highlighted by you? No, we all are Nigerians, and the first thing we've got to do is to acknowledge that we've got a problem. Until Justice Uwais, who was the eighth indigenous chief justice of Nigeria. Only one chief justice, justice, the first chief justice, justice uh, Adem chief justice Ademola, had a son or a child of his on the judiciary. That was the late Neka Ademola who rose to the court of appeal but couldn't get to the Supreme Court for reasons that should not detain us here. But since then, I will not go into details on this program, but most chief justices, with the exception of about two of them, have had, uh, or three, if, you, if I add one of the ones that was uh, forced out, have had their children or relatives appointed to high office in the judiciary. That will suggest a tendency that needs to be questioned. And when members of the bench begin to convert judicial office, in order to create family dynasties in it. That begins to undermine public confidence in the judiciary. The code of conduct, the judicial code of conduct, supervised by the National Judicial Council under the self-same chief justice, legislates that members of the judiciary should not convert their office for private gain or for the gain of their relatives. When I, as a senior judge or a chief justice, begin to plant my children onto the bench, creating intergenerational family succession pipelines. What I am doing is converting my judicial office into private gain. That violates the judicial code of conduct. That is exactly what is happening. And when that happens, people lose faith in the judiciary. Even when these children or relatives do qualify, or even more than qualify in some instances. I mean, should they pay? Just um, because, uh, yeah. You know, I, I'd like to be given one example of any of these so-called qualified, overqualified children. You know the thing. Uh, first of all, the genius of anyone, should, it should not be the punishment of a parent to discover that they've, been, they've given birth to a genius. If you've given birth to a genius, the world should certify it not you. So a self-interested certification by a parent of the genius, judicial, forensic, legal genius of their child will always be self-interested and suspect. Number two, as a matter of fact, I, I can tell you stories and give you instances of people who have sons and daughters and other people in other relationships I don't want to mention on national, on, on children's television, um, who have failed the examinations and yet been jumped over people who were better qualified because they were what? Related to judicial figures. Femi Falano two years ago mentioned one who actually scored zero in the written tests and was nevertheless appointed. He came from one of the states of the Southwest. In this cycle of appointments, as actually amongst the people sworn in today, if I may, there was one particular one who failed the computerized tests but was jumped ahead of people who passed. Okay? In right. another cycle of appointments, not too long ago, there was one person who didn't even participate at all in the interviews of any sort and was put on the list because they were related to another judicial figure. When these happen like that, and the people who are involved, I am not involved, but I know, and don't ask me how I know, but I know, when this happens and people know these things, they don't have respect for the people who are appointed. Not mind the fact that we'll go and say, my lord and my lady. We know who is who. 
Right, very quickly, uh, on to one of the points raised by the CJN uh, during the swearing-in. He actually charged uh, the judges to always apply constitutional provisions in deciding each case. Uh, constitutional provisions and their conscience, quoting the CJN uh, there. How important is it to stress uh, this point? Well, clearly... The, the judges swear to apply the law, and the basis of the law is the constitution. So we, you know, it, it's it, if he wants to restate it, it's well within his rights as chief justice to restate it. But that is what the lawyers uh, swear to do. Um, the point is that this, uh, sorry, the judges swear to do indeed, indeed the lawyers, as a matter of fact. But it seems to me this is a point that needs to be restated not just to incoming judges. Uh, but to existing judges and justices at all levels. When you read some of the judgments coming out of these election petitions, you wonder whether uh, the senior judges and justices who are sitting on those across the board, particularly at the state levels in many of the cases, you wonder whether of them, many of them actually are aware of this uh, particular admonition by the current chief justice that they should be bound by law and by the constitution. Uh, uh, and that is a challenge in the country at the moment. Uh, and the perception that justice, or what people call justice, or certainly judgments, or the business of the courts, is, uh, uh, is being transacted uh, you know, for value, for material value between parties uh, and those who are deciding the cases is very high. And we've got to acknowledge that reality. If we don't acknowledge that reality, something is wrong. Now, there are good judges. There are hardworking judges. There are judges who are doing their best in very difficult circumstances. And the fact that the NJC is not effective enough in, in disciplining the ones who are bringing the vocation of the judiciary into disrepute is giving a bad name to, indeed, the judges who are doing hard work and the NJC needs to do better. Well, uh, Mr. Olinkal, we'll stay with you uh, and I will come back to you after this moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we still have Chidi Odinkalu uh, joining us on Newsnight tonight. We've been speaking, of course, on the CJN swearing in of 23 uh, federal high court judges, including uh, his son. He's been giving us his opinion on that. But let's go on to other things. If we can establish that Chidi Odinkalu uh, is there. Right. Well, a top official of the Chicago State University, that's CSU, Carl Westberg, says... A replacement copy of the certificate that President Bola Tinubu uh, submitted to Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, may not have emanated from the institution. Well, Westberg, who is the registrar of the university, while speaking under oath uh, during the deposition of documents, specifically told the U.S. court that he was seeing the certificate copy for the very first time in the proceedings. We still have Mr. Chidi Odinkalu. Uh, would like to get your thoughts on uh, this uh, controversy around uh, Mr. President's certificate at the CSU. Well, um, I just finished reading the, the uncertified transcript, actually, of that particular deposition because I want to educate myself um, on the issues. And it seems quite clear that um, the university's testimony is that the certificate, the INEC, um, the INEC diploma, as it is called in the deposition, uh, was not issued by the university, by the Chicago State University. Um, in ordinary parlance, that makes it a forgery. It's really that straightforward. Uh, the question then becomes, I mean, the question is immaterial where it came from. If the university, the, 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 um, the answer of the university did not admit of dissimulation. It was very clear. Uh, that does not leave much room for speculation. Well, in this uh, uh, case, I think, uh, well, that's where we have to leave it. We'd like to thank you for your time, uh, Chidi Odinkalu. Many thanks for your insights. Mm -hmm.